next one, we have a cylindrical shell of radius 5 centimeters and length 5 meters. So here, the idea is that this is, the length is much, much larger than the radius. So we can think of, of it as if it's an infinitely long cylinder. That is, when we apply Gauss's law, as long as we're not near the edges of the cylinder, we can think of it as infinitely long. So it has its, its charge uniformly distributed on its curved surface. At a point 10 centimeters radially outward from the center of the shell, so here's a shell, and the radius is 5 centimeters. So here's the center of the shell, 5 centimeters, and then you go 10 centimeters here. The electric field has a magnitude. Now we know how the electric field looks like since apparently we're putting positive charge here. So the electric field is radially out. And it's 1,000 newtons per coulomb. If I'm putting negative charge, it will just be radially in. It doesn't matter. The magnitude is 1,000 newtons per coulomb. So we would like to find the net charge on the shell. So here we are very far from the edges. The edges are two and a half meters away this way, two and a half meters away this way. And the point here is only 10 centimeters away. So I can, we can either, if you know the electric field for a, a cylindrical shell, use it, or you just do it from scratch. You do a Gaussian surface, which is a cylinder of radius r, little r, and height h. Now, on the caps, the electric field is everywhere radial. On the caps, the normal to the caps, Okay, is perpendicular to the electric field. So the caps don't contribute to the flux. Only the curved part. The curved part will give us integral E dot dA, the electric field and dA for the curved parts are in the same direction. So this is just E times dA, which is E times the area. And the area of the curved parts is 2 pi r h. It's a circumference times the height. This is equal to the charge within the cylinder, within the Gaussian surface. It's only the charge here on the shell that's where the charge is. And if the charge density on the shell is lambda, then it's just lambda times the height, because this is uh, what's enclosed within the Gaussian cylinder. The amount of charge is lambda times the height h. That's the amount of the cylinder within, or the amount of the, of the cylindrical shell within the Gaussian surface. So it's just lambda h. h cancels, and e is cos lambda over 2 pi r. This is the same expression. Uh, it's lambda over epsilon zero, two pi is q enclosed over epsilon zero. This is the same expression that we obtained for the cylinder. It's true for the cylindrical shell, and it's true for a line of charge. As long as you're outside, they're all the, it's all the same. Whether it's a line of charge, a cylindrical shell, or a cylinder. As long as you're outside the cylinder or outside the shell, it's the same expression as that for a line charge. 2 pi epsilon 0 r. That's the electric field. Now, this electric field, we, we're told it's 1,000. When r is 10 centimeters. So we have lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0. You can multiply by 2 and 4 pi epsilon 0. And r is 
0 0.1. Now, 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 is just 9 times 10 to the 9. So this is 9 times 10 to the 9 times 2 lambda over 0.1, so times 10, is equal to 1,000. That is 10 to the 3. So this means that lambda, this is 10 to the 10 and 18. So that's 10 to the 3 over 18 times 10 to the 10. So this is 10 to the minus 7, 1 over 18 times 10 to the minus 7. Coulombs per meter. Now, since the length is 5 meters, total length, so total charge Q is uh, lambda times L, so it's 5 meters over 18 times 10 to the minus 7 coulombs. That's the total charge. What is the electric field at a point 3 centimeters from the axis, measured radially from the center? So how about if I take now a point here? Three centimeters. I can take a, again, like we did before, a Gaussian cylinder, but now of radius three centimeters. And again, we get E times two pi r times the height of the cylinder. But what is the charge now enclosed? Zero. There is no charge. Because this Gaussian cylinder now is inside the shell. And there are no charges there. The charges are on the shell. So the charge is zero. So there's no lambda now. It's just zero. So now we get, so for part B, we get E times 2 pi R H now is Q enclosed over epsilon zero, which is zero. So what is E? Zero. So the electric field inside the shell is zero. Okay.